bed mass with fractions. You follow pretty much the same as you do with any other regular equation, except you need to reduce the fractions. That means if it's 4 over 8, you need to reduce it to 1 half. You need to do a reciprocal for division, in other words, flip it around. And you need to find common denominators for when you're adding or subtracting, same as what you learned in the previous lessons. So let's take this example right here. Here we have a subtraction and a multiplication. And according to bed mass, multiplication comes first, the m part. So let's do this. For multiplication, we can cross-simplify this first. So I'm going to see how many 2's can go into 2? 1. And then 4 2's can go into 8. And look at this one here. 3 can go into 3 once, and 3 can go into 3 once. Now this is just a simple multiplication, top times top and bottom times bottom. So 1 times 1 is 1, and 4 times 1 is 4. Now we remember to write the rest of it, don't forget that. 5 over 6, subtract 1 quarter. Now all we got to do when we're subtracting is make sure the bottoms are the same. So 12 is the closest we can get to this being the same. So if I times 6 by 2, I got to times 5 by 2. If I times 4 by 3, I've got to times the top by 3. That will make the bottoms be 12, or common denominators. So the bottoms will be 12, as we said. Now we just got to work out the top. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 1 is 3. Now all we got to do is 10 take away 3 is 7. And then, of course, the bottoms don't change when you're adding or subtracting. And there's our answer. In this example, we've got a whole lot of them to do. So using bed mass, we can do multiplication or division. But here's a bracket to do first. So we will do this bracket first. So let's start with 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4. Now if we take 1 over 8 and we want to do 1 over 4, how can we make this 4 become the same as that 8? Well, if we times it by 2 and we times this by 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 over 8 is an equivalent fraction for 1 over 4. Now we can add them together. 1 over 8 plus 2 over 8 will be 3 over 8. Bring down everything else we had, so there's our multiplication, there's our 4 over 5, our divided by, there's our 2 over 3, and subtract, and then all of that just gets brought down. Now according to bed mass, we do multiplication and division next. In the order they appear, well let's do this division part right there. So, 2 over 3 divided by 4 over 5. Well, when you're doing division of fractions, it's really multiplication, and we take the reciprocal, like this. And right away, we know 2 will go into 4, so 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice, so we just cross simplified. 1 times 5 is 5, and 3 times 2 is 6. And of course, write everything, bring everything else back down, times 3 over 8, and this is a minus that was in front, and then we got 3 over 4. Now we have the multiplication to do next, because multiplication becomes before subtraction. And what can we get, first of all, when we multiply? We can cross-simplify a couple of them. 3 goes into 3 once and 3 goes into 6 twice. So 1 times 5 on the top is 5, and 2 times 8 on the bottom is 16, and rewrite everything we had there before. Now the last step is to subtract. That's the only thing we have left. But how can we make the bottoms become the same? Well, if we times 4 times 4, it'll give us 16. So we'll do the same for the top. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. 
and then we're going to subtract 5 over 16 and then it's just a matter of 12 subtract 5 is 7 and then 16 remains on the bottom and there's our final answer. In another example we have division we have multiplication and we have addition so we know division and multiplication come first so I'm gonna do the division part first so we got 14 over 15 and we're not going to divide a fraction, we're going to multiply the reciprocal or the opposite. Now we can cross simplify. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 14 7 times, 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 15 5 times. So now we just multiply the tops and the bottoms. 7 times 1 is 7, 5 times 1 is 5, so all that became 7 over 5. And don't forget what's left. So we go times 5 over 8 plus 3 over 4. Okay. So next step, do we do multiplication or addition? Well, we always do multiplication first, so let's do that. And don't forget, you can cross simplify this one and this one. So 5 goes into 5 once, and 5 goes into 5 once. So now 7 times 1 is 7, 1 times 8 is 8, and here's what we've reduced it all to. Now the only thing left when you're adding is to find a common denominator or common bottom. And to make that 4 become an 8, it'll work out nicely. Just times it by 2, and times it by 2, and you will have 6 over 8 and don't forget to add your 7 over 8 and your final answer in this one is 7 plus 6 which is 13 over 8 I don't like to leave it as an improper fraction so 8 goes into 13 one time and then there is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 so there's 5 left over out of 8 so don't forget to change your improper fraction to a mixed number again. The next one involves whole numbers or mixed numbers with a whole number in front of it. Now the first thing to do when you get one of these is to change all of these mixed numbers to improper fractions. So let's do that. So this one's going to be out of 3, take away something, and that's going to be out of 4 plus one half, so at least the one half doesn't change, divided by something out of five. So we're going to change these. So let's change this to an improper fraction. Three times three is nine, ten, eleven, done. Two times four is eight, plus one more is nine. Two times five is ten, plus two more is twelve. Now we can go ahead and use bed mass to figure out which one to do first and we always do the division before addition and subtraction. So one half and we're going to multiply it by five over two because we flip it over. We don't really do division. Again there's nothing here that we can actually cross simplify. So our answer one times five is five, two times twelve is twenty four. So this all became 25 over 24. Let's put the rest of our fractions back into it. And there we go. Now do we do addition or subtraction next? Well, we do them in the order that it appears. So I'm going to do this one first, the subtraction. So the only way to subtract them is make sure they have the same bottom. And the easiest way for this one, or the common denominator, will be 12. So I can times this by 4 to make the bottom 12. And I can times this by 3 to make the bottoms 12. And I'll end up with 44 over 12. Subtract 27 over 12. And if you take that then, 44 
subtract 12, 27 and you borrow and you can do this on the side and you'll be left with 17 so this will all become 17 over 12 and then bring down what's left so we're going to add that to 5 over 24 because that's what we had right there the last thing we got to do is make them have common denominators because you can't add them unless they're the same. And all I got to do to make this 12 become a 24 is to times it by 2 and that'll be 34 on top and 24 on the bottom and then I'll just add it to my 5 over 24 and my total is 39 over 24 but I'm not going to leave it like that. I will get 124. So 24 goes into 39 once, and there's going to be some left over. So there will be 15 left over when I take 24 from 39. Now, can we divide the top and the bottom by something? Can we reduce this fraction? Well, if I divide this by 3, and divide the bottom by 3, I can reduce this fraction to 15 divided by 3 is 5 and 24 divided by 3 is 8 and that will be your final answer. So always remember to reduce your fractions to as low as it can go or in other words see if you can divide them by the same thing to make it smaller.